day and welcome to this online lecture on the topic of assessment of physical activity with indirect calorimetry. I am Dr. Semba and this is blended learning course in collaboration between University of Ljubljana and University of Porto. In this lecture, we will explore and discuss the key concepts and practical applications related to assessment of physical activity with indirect calorimetry. By the end of this lecture, you should have a deeper understanding of assessment with indirect calorimetry and be able to apply the knowledge gained to your own life or work. So, why don't we get started? Indirect calorimetry is a technique that has been used for many years to measure an individual's energy expenditure, which is essentially the number of calories they burn throughout the day. It works by analyzing the gases an individual exhales, specifically the amount of oxygen they consume and the amount of carbon dioxide they produce. The principle behind indirect calorimetry is simple. When the body metabolizes food, it requires oxygen to break down nutrients and produce energy. This process also generates carbon dioxide, which is then exhaled out of the body. By measuring the amount of oxygen consumed and carbon dioxide produced, the rate of energy expenditure can be calculated. Indirect calorimetry can be performed in various ways, such as using a handheld device or a specialized machine called a metabolic cart. The equipment typically measures the concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air an individual breathes in and out, and uses this information to calculate their energy expenditure. Clinical research studies, indirect calorimetry can provide valuable information about an individual's metabolic rate, which is the rate at which their body burns calories at rest. Athletes and fitness enthusiasts can also benefit from indirect calorimetry to determine their calorie needs during training and exercise. Furthermore, individuals who are looking to lose weight or improve their overall health can use indirect calorimetry to tailor their diet and exercise routines to meet their specific energy needs. According to a study published in the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, indirect calorimetry has been found to be more accurate in measuring energy expenditure than other commonly used methods, such as equations based on body weight and activity level. The study found that indirect calorimetry had an accuracy rate of 96%, compared to 58% for the equations. Indirect calorimetry can be particularly useful in clinical research studies to assess metabolic rate changes in response to interventions such as medication or diet changes. For example, a study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism used indirect calorimetry to measure the metabolic rate of participants with type 2 diabetes before and after they followed a low-carbohydrate diet. The results showed a significant increase in metabolic rate, indicating that the diet may have beneficial effects on metabolism. Finally, indirect calorimetry can also be useful in weight loss programs. By accurately measuring an individual's metabolic rate, they can adjust their diet and exercise routines to meet their specific energy needs, which can help improve weight loss outcomes. A study published in the International Journal of Obesity used indirect calorimetry to measure the metabolic rate of participants before and after a 12-week weight loss program. The results showed that those who received personalized diet and exercise recommendations based on their energy needs had significantly greater weight loss than those who followed a standard weight loss program. Despite its many applications, it is important to note that indirect calorimetry is not a perfect measure of energy expenditure. There are other factors that can influence the metabolism, such as hormone levels and environmental factors, which can affect the accuracy of the measurement. However, 
Indirect calorimetry remains a valuable tool in understanding the body's energy requirements and can aid in the development of effective interventions to promote health and fitness. As we come to the end of this blended learning course on the topic of assessment of physical activity with indirect calorimetry, I hope that you have gained a deeper understanding of the importance of assessing physical activity, the various methods available for doing so, and the factors to consider when choosing an appropriate method. Thank you for your participation in this blended learning course, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors.